Okay, well, here we go. It's uh, uh, another of our wonderful In Conversations with, carrying on the success of all the wonderful conversations we've previously had. And today we welcome Deborah Bido. And I'm going to read Debbie's biog here. So we've just uh, got that in mind. And then, of course, we're going to launch into our conversation and, and hear her musical choices. So Debbie Bido is a graduate of the University of York and studied voice under Yvonne Seymour as well as Coral Gould um, in Birmingham and John Hancorn associated with Glyndebourne. Um, She's now faculty head of performing arts at Guernsey Grammar School and Sixth Form Centre. You can usually find her conducting a a range of orchestras, bands and choirs. Debbie has performed with a wide range of choirs uh, during her career, starting with world and UK tours with the National Youth Choir of Great Britain, as well as chamber groups, including the Ebor Singers and Cantalena. She's also undertaken a varied range of principal roles in both the UK and Guernsey, most recently performing her own concert of German leader at St. James. She has performed solo roles for a variety of choral societies in the UK, including works such as Mozart's Requiem, Pergolesi's Starbuck Marta, Haydn's Nelson, a master name, but a few. Uh, Debbie is a regular member and soloist for Guernsey Chamber Choir, having been on tours to St. Marlow and Cambridge over recent years. She has been soloist for the Guernsey Choral and Orchestral Society, as well as playing lead roles in a number of charity Gilbert and Sullivan performances. And she enjoys performing a wide range of music in a variety of languages. So quite a varied CV there. And the first thing I really want to ask you about, um, Debbie, is how things are on Guernsey, current COVID um, pandemic, because I think you're probably in a bit of a privileged position. Just tell us about Guernsey at the moment. Yes, we're very privileged. I, I feel guilty talking about it to you because I know you're having such a tough time. Um, but we are pretty much COVID free and have have been since June. Um, so we are um, literally living pretty much normal lives. Um, the schools went back in June and we've continued as normal. We have about eight cases on the island at the moment, but they're all within self-isolation. Um, and that's because we've had um, the viro- virologist leading um, the whole way, Dr. Nicola Brink, um, right from the beginning. And she's been amazing. She made it onto the ITV national news and she's basically controlled the whole thing. And it's meant that we've ended up pretty much COVID free. Um, so it's, it's been fantastic. So everything is, is running as normal. And I know your parents are with you at the moment, which means they're getting a, a proper holiday. Your mum was telling me she could get out and about and go to restaurants and all the things we can't do. So uh, uh, that's tremendous. We're, we're very pleased for you and just that little bit jealous as well, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so I think let's just launch straight in with your first piece. What's your first piece and, and, and why have you chosen it? OK, so I've chosen the main theme from the film Out of Africa by John Barry. Um, and I guess the reason for it is because um, it's, that, it's that question you're asked sometimes, what's your most memorable moment in music? And this will always be mine because when I was 13, I was very lucky to actually go and play this piece of music in the Royal Albert Hall uh, with the school wind band of 100 people. And we played at the school prom and I'll just never forget it. And I guess it had a big impact on my musical life um, and it's become very emotional and important um, in my life. And so that's why I, I thought of that immediately when you asked for my six choices. <laughs> yes, I think those memories of music making when you're a teenager are especially powerful and they do live with you for life. So I, I identify with that and I think it is a wonderful choice. So thank you for that. Uh, let's hear it. Goose pimples uh, and tears. Uh, There's just a welling out of me at the moment. So oh, I'm sure that's true for everybody listening because uh, Rutland Symphony has got a great pedigree of uh, playing wonderful film concerts under uh, the, the f- fantastic associate conductor we've got, uh, David um, Kalo. So perhaps I'm sure he'll have some comments. If you've got questions, by the way, put them in the chat bar. And of course, um, Debbie's going to take those questions at the end. So thank you for that. 
perhaps you could tell us a little bit more about your music making when you were at school um, up to the time when you went to university. Yeah, so um, I, my mum always said that she thought I'd be a musician um, because when I was a baby, she used to sing notes to me and apparently I used to sing them back in perfect pitch, so I don't wow. know. Wow. <laughs> um, but she also played the piano uh, while she was pregnant with me, um, so that could have had an effect, of course. Yes. Um, but um, she started me on the piano when I was eight, um, and from there I sort of, I, apparently I was never nagged to need to practice, it was something I always wanted to do, and I asked to learn to play an instrument, um, and I started on violin, but unfortunately it didn't work out for me, I didn't enjoy it, um, so I swapped to clarinet um, and um, played that. Um, it's only been the last few years where I've stopped playing really, um, and then I started singing lessons when I was 13. Um, and uh, it went from there. And I was very lucky that my secondary school um, was one of the top schools for music at the time in the area. It was a comprehensive large school, but it had a fantastic music department. So I went straight okay. into playing clarinet in a hundred strong wind band um, and had all of the experiences that the National Festival for Youth um, and uh, sang in choirs and all sorts of things there. Um, and that's really where my love of music came from. Um, and I was very much nurtured by my two music teachers who, um, you know, gave me so many opportunities uh, going through secondary school. Oh, that's great to hear. I, I'd like to hear a bit more about uh, your uh, teaching experience at the moment a bit later, but that's good to hear that you had such a, a, a great start. Now, I think you went on to um, York University. Um, how did you find your time there? I absolutely loved it. Um, it was um, just a really interesting course. Um, it focused very much on performance and on essay writing, which are my two strengths. Um, and so I really enjoyed working on that. It was modular, so you could pick all sorts of different modules. So I tried to do some really wide ranging things. So I, I did you know, something on Purcell, but I also did something on electronic sounds um, and tried to sort of really broaden my horizons because I always knew I wanted to be a music teacher. So um, I obviously thought that would be helpful to try and do lots of things and a lot of singing and a lot of singing in the York Minster as well. How wonderful. So I think we're going to hear your second piece now. Uh, perhaps you'd like to tell us what it is and introduce it and tell us uh, why you've chosen it. So this is Mozart's Piano Concerto number 23, K488, and it's his second movement. And this really is just for the beauty of the uh, second movement and the emotion that it brings and I think sometimes when you listen to it you could think it was somebody written by a later composer it's just got so much emotion and I just think it's a beautiful theme tune. Yes, uh, that's just so moving. Thank you for that choice. Uh, we've played that as, a, uh, as an orchestra a couple of times, and I think it is, for me, one of it, my absolute favourite piano concertos from Mozart, so great choice. Uh, you said you were always thinking about going to teaching. Of course, that's how we know each other, because we were uh, members of staff together at, uh, at Derby Grammar School, and a uh, huge admiration for your, your versatility as a teacher. Um, you seem to encompass so many skills and uh, be interested in so many styles and be able to uh, encourage pupils in, in a whole variety of different ways. Uh, so, so what is it about teaching that, that really appeals to you? What, what is it that gives you that buzz? I think it's just being able to help the students to learn and to really appreciate music. And when you come across a student who's got so much passion, it's just really good to be able to help them come on and improve. Um, and it doesn't matter what level they're at, it can be a beginner or it can be, um, be much more extended and it's just really, really enjoyable. Um, and you do, you just, it's lovely to see them develop um, throughout that time. Um, and there are many students I'm still in touch with and that's really nice as well to build that relationship because I'm still in touch with my teacher. Um, and so I appreciate that relationship. 
Yes, you're very good at keeping in touch. And I have to tell our listeners that, in fact, the grammar school in Derby and your school in Guernsey, we have an exchange link, which means we do keep in touch and pupils keep in touch. And indeed, the pupils keep in touch with each other, too. Um, I know my kids are still very, very much uh, in contact with, with, with friends in Guernsey. So, you know, you facilitated an awful lot over and above music making. You're, you're a real sort of mover and shaker in so many ways. <laughs> Um, now, what about your third choice? I think you're heading for some jazz now. I am, yes. Um, my third choice is I've Got You Under My Skin, Cole Porter, um, sung by Frank Sinatra. Um, and this is sort of my discovery of jazz, really. Um, when I was 14, my music teacher gave me a tenor saxophone and said, here you are, learn this, we're starting a swing band. Um, so I had a go and just fell in love with swing music. Um, and so I've done a little bit of dabbling in jazz singing um, and uh, I just really enjoy it and of course living on Guernsey um, we celebrate Liberation Day every year and we have a big hangar ball with the 1940s costumes wow. and believe it or not it's the Ashby de la Zouche swing band who come over and play for us uh, <laughs> so um, and I don't think I'd ever heard them when I lived in the UK um, so we have a lot of swing um, I sang this song to my husband on our wedding party and um, I also I'm dancing to it this year. I'm dancing the foxtrot to it. So it's got lots of reasons why I've chosen it. Well, let's have a listen and then we'll pick up on this um, business about you dancing a little bit later as well, because that's certainly something I want to explore. OK, here we go. I can see the chat bar going crazy with comments and great. That's wonderful. You've, you've touched uh, people's uh, emotions in so many different ways already in this conversation. Uh, so I want to go back to uh, before you went to Guernsey and you were at school and you met Carl. And um, it was obviously we we're going to um, uh, have, have a great relationship and, 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 and indeed get married. But then, of course, where were you going to live? And mm. for me, one of the most exciting things about my career is about well, a bit like you sort of making it work for members of staff. And this job came up on Guernsey. Um, and uh, it was the only job you could go for. It was the only job on the island that was really going to suit you. And you just had to get it. So <laughs> we spent ages and ages working on your uh, curriculum vitae and your application. I'm sure lots of other people helped you as well. Um, and you got the job, which was extraordinary. And that led to a completely new life for you on Guernsey. And we were just over the moon for you. Um, perhaps you could just tell us a little bit about when you arrived in Guernsey and indeed sort of um, a bit about your uh, wedding there, because I think that was uh, extraordinarily romantic and, 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 and very sort of Guernsey orientated. Um, mm. Just tell us a bit about how, how you arrived in Guernsey and what you expected. Well, um, we, when we got engaged, both of us immediately thought of the Little Island Herm. So this is um, a 20 minute boat ride just off Guernsey and you can see it from the mainland. Um, and there's a little tiny chapel there which seats probably about 20, 25 people. And we just loved the island so much that we decided that we wanted to get married there. So we had a small ceremony and we had 16 people um, at our wedding. And then we did a big party, which became our leaving party at Chatsworth um, in the restaurant. Um, so that was really, really nice. Um, but when I got to Guernsey, I think the thing that stood out to me the most was the fact that it is such a small community. Um, so I made sure I got involved in the musical life straight away and I got known pretty quickly with my singing. And what amazed me was I would be walking down the high street and somebody would just come up and start talking to me, clearly knowing who I was and I had no idea who they were um, until some connection came about in conversation. And that's the biggest thing, I think. It's such a small community and you don't have to travel very far to do anything. So whereas in England, I was traveling for a long time to get to events, I can be there in five to 10 minutes. So I can actually fit more than one rehearsal in an evening if I need to. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so, so really, uh, the move to Guernsey um, has ticked lots of boxes because I'm guessing you've you've got lots of jazz going in your school, but of course you're able to do lots of singing on the island because, uh, well, you're a sort of must go to soloist. I'm guessing I <laughs> I can't think of anyone I'd rather rather be working with as a soprano soloist. And you, you you know you you you're there on the doorstep. <laughs> so um, choral music still features very big for you. Your, your own singing. It does, yes. Um, I've been in um, I've I've been in various choirs on the island, and I've really settled with Guernsey Chamber Choir. Yeah. Um, our conductor Helen Grand is fantastic, and she she does a lot of different types of music. Um, so at Christmas, just gone, um, I sang the solo in Handel's Laudate Pueri Dominum, uh, which seriously uh, tested me. Uh, <laughs> it was it was fantastic. Um, and so, yes, we do different concerts. I've also sung with Guernsey Bark Choir um, and we have an orchestral society and choral society on the island and a lot of different choirs that are going on as well. So the musical life is really, really rich over here. Um, same with orchestral. We have a Guernsey Symphony Orchestra as well. Yes. And I think you do make the odd journey across to France as well. Yes. Um, we've been to sing in the St. Marlowe um, Sacred festival um, so we've been able to take our music over there so we took um, one year Handel's Dixie Dominus um, okay. and performed that in the cathedral um, so that was really interesting because it was the first time I'd been to St Marlowe as well um, so that was really nice. It's a great place St Marlowe, I hope you don't arrive there too seasick to be able to <laughs> sing. <laughs> no it, it was okay when we, were, when we went, <laughs> it's about an hour. I know it's a bit choppy, uh, right well that, I think that leads very nicely on to our next bit of music What's that? Um, so this is the uh, Bar Madich um, from St. Matthew Passion um, by Bach. Um, and uh, again, uh, you might notice most of my choices are quite um, melancholy and emotional, and I tend to do that, um, particularly when I'm programming. I have to remind myself to put in a fast piece every so <laughs> often. Um, again, it's for its beauty. I think the, the way that the violin and the um, soloist work together um, is just... Um, spectacular really and it's a, a favourite piece of mine. Gosh, um, I must say, as, a, as an oboist, uh, having played uh, all these really big pieces on so many different occasions, um, actually the nicest thing is when you're not playing, it's just listening to movements like that, uh, mm -hmm. close up to, um, and uh, uh, I, I mean, obviously Bach's Baroque, but there's such romance in that as well. There is, and that's, I think, what I felt about the Mozart. Both of those pieces, to me, have that romantic feel um, as well as their own style. Uh, but by, by romantic, I'm, I mean sort of emotionally yes. um, moving in, in, in a way that seems um, not tied to a particular time in history. That they're timeless in that, in, in that way they touch, they touch the, a nerve, really. Yes, they really get the emotion of the piece across. Um, and that's why they appeal so much to me. Hmm. Uh, so have you sung uh, St Matthew Passion? I have, yes. Um, I sang it first, um, when, when I first came across it when I was at university, the uh, York Chamber Choir I was a member of, and we all um, shared the solos. Um, and um, I didn't do the uh, Bar Modich then, I actually did um, another soprano piece. Um, but since then, that's when I became to love it. Um, and so through my life, I've always um, enjoyed singing it. And last year, I finally got the opportunity to sing it with um, a violinist who is over here um, called Max Wong. And he is doing a PhD um, at the Royal College of Music. And he's actually specializing in um, one of Bach's partitas. Um, okay. And so we got together and did a concert for violin and soprano. Right, that's interesting. Uh, and I suppose that leads on really to uh, another discussion I wanted to have with you about putting recitals together, because I think that's something you're very good at and very passionate about. Um, and and uh, again, my memory goes back to the time when you were uh, a colleague uh, in, in, in Derby Grammar School. We had an astonishingly good 
uh, pupil, uh, Ben Bloor, who was uh, went on to become a, a tremendously well thought of organist. Um, I mean, he ended up as um, he went to uh, Windsor Castle as the scholar and then New College Oxford and yeah. then uh, Westminster Abbey and he's won international prizes. But actually, <clears throat> For me, his most impress impressive um, moment was accompanying you in a recital. I've never seen such maturity from 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 a teenager in accompanying a, 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 a you know a, a very um, a able uh, soloist in a in a quite tricky recital program. Just just tell me about that because didn't you go on to do something quite astonishing in Birmingham with him as well? Yes, um, I mean I have to say. I can honestly say that Ben has been the best pianist accompanist I've ever had in my whole life. Um, and he was only 18 then, um, but he just knew how to breathe with me. And he just knew exactly what I wanted to do with the shaping of the phrases. Um, and it just worked so well. And so we worked so well together that he actually accompanied me for my LLCM diploma um, and we worked really hard and we went to do the, um, the exam in Birmingham. And when I got the results sheet, um, I was very lucky to have done so well that we got invited to perform at the overall concert for the whole of the country. Um, but they actually commented in the mark sheet about my accompanist because they could see he was young. Um, and they actually said how astonished they were at his accompanying um, and that just shows, and I, I feel very privileged to have been able to work with him. Yes, I think Ben is someone who I'd like to invite to be a soloist with the Sinfonia because we're still in touch. He got married recently and he's 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 a, a really towering figure as a keyboard player, despite being so young. Um, and I know, of course, you taught him A-level. In fact, I taught him as well. Um, and he was he was a sort of highlight in a career, really. Absolutely. Uh, yes. Um, so let's just talk a little bit more about 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 recitals. Um, uh, I think that um, uh, you have given recitals in St James. Tell us about St James. What, what, what is that? Is that the concert hall on Guernsey? It is. So we have one concert hall on Guernsey, St James. It seats about three hundred people. Um, it's a lovely venue, um, and, and because of um, COVID. Uh, and we obviously have not been able to have any musicians come over, which has given local musicians even more opportunity. Um, so I actually got approached and was asked, would I like to put on my own concert? Um, so um, I worked with a pianist um, and came up with a programme. And in the end, I settled on um, German Leader um, because I, would, I thought it would work for you know, a sort of select group of people. I wasn't looking to fill the concert hall, but I had about 80 there on the night, um, which was really nice and it worked really well um, in round table seating. Um, so that was nice. Um, and I did a selection of songs in the first half. And then the second half, I did the Schumann, Frau and Lieber and Laban, which again is something I'd wanted to perform. Um, and it was a, a really nice evening. And again, I feel very lucky that I had that opportunity. Did you did you sing the recital, uh, the recital in German? I, I know at the beginning uh, in your bio it said that you enjoy uh, performing in a range of languages. So did you sing in German? I did. I did sing in German. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and uh, can we just perhaps touch upon um, uh, the virtues of singing in different languages? Have you got a particular language you you enjoy singing? I don't know Estonian or or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, probably German's my favourite because I, I I guess that's the one I've done the most work on. Um, I don't speak any of these languages particularly well, um, just to point that out. I have to do my training um, on it, um, but um, German works quite well. And Italian, um, I quite like singing in Italian because it just has that singing quality to it and the rolled R's um, and you can, you can really uh, work with that. I love French music, um, but I'd say that's probably the hardest to sing. Uh, which is quite funny considering I have a French surname. Uh, <laughs> um, but I would say that's the hardest to pronounce and get right, particularly as you often sing French differently to how you speak it. Is there a, is there a, a, a language on Guernsey that's still, still spoken to any extent at all? There is. Um, we have Patois, which is Guernsey French. Um, and it's being revived at the moment, actually. There's a lot of initiative over here to try and get um, Patois spoken a lot more. Also, it's not okay. long, and um, so yes. 
Perhaps your next recital could be in what? What, what do you call? Do you, I mean, you don't call it patois. Guernsey's. What, what's it called? Um. Well, yeah, Guernsey French. It's basically Guernsey it. French. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's your next choice? Um, so, my next choice is Morgan by um, Strauss, um, sung by Dame Janet Baker. Now, I wanted to ask, sorry to interrupt, I just wanted to ask you about Dame Janet Baker, so I'm not sure you're going to spill the beans on this, so I'm going to do it for you. You are related to Dame Janet Baker. Tell us about well, that. Well, supposedly related. I don't have actual proof, um, but my mum's um, uh, my mum's uh, grandmother um, always said um, that she was related to Dame Janet Baker, and they've tried to find some kind of evidence through the family tree, but they haven't yet, and um, they're still working on it. Um, but they did write to her um, and sort of ask her about this. Um, and she had a look and she couldn't find any connection, but she said she was very happy um, if we were related because of course, with me going to the University of York, uh, that's where she's chancellor. Uh, wow. And so, um, she actually sort of gave me my degree, if you like. Uh, <laughs> so that's an interesting connection, but we haven't yet found the evidence. <laughs> That's a remarkable tie-up, um, and uh, when you w w when you chose the music, and I could see you'd got Morgan sung by Dame Janet Baker, I thought my, my little memory cells whirled around, and I thought oh, I must ask must ask Debbie about this. So uh, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, but I think actually, when you did see pictures with us um, uh, with, with Rutland Symphonia a couple of years ago. Um, you flagged up Dame Janet Baker's recording of that as something that was special mm -hmm. to you as well. It was, yes. Yes, I just liked her interpretation and um, yeah, sort of used that to help me with mine. Yes, yes. I, I did find accompanying you, by the way, in, in that uh, in that concert, remarkably easy. And, and, and afterwards, I sort of thought about it quite hard. And I, I think it's to do with two things. I think it's to do with the fact that um, I, I'm a wind player, so I sort of able to breathe with you and, and you allow that to happen. Um, but also our close relationship, I really think spilt over into the music and made it a, a very special uh, occasion. Now, so, so you've chosen Morgan. Uh, is this a piece that you've sung? It is, yes, I have sung it um, a few on a few occasions. Um, and for me, it's about the opening and piano part. Um, I don't think that's on the, the clip you've got, but the opening piano part, it's got to be, you've got to be so still as a singer and you're quite exposed because it's a long introduction, but it's beautiful piano writing. And then the singer just comes in as if already in thought. Um, and you've got to capture that. And it's so soft. It's actually really difficult to sing, um, but it's just such beautiful writing. So that was why I chose it. I think it's available in a, an orchestral version, which came first. Yes, yeah. Um, I, actually, I don't know which came first. Um, I knew it as the piano version. Um, but I don't know. I bet by the end of the conversation, someone would have looked that up. <laughs> OK, so let's hear it. Thank you. Gosh, uh, oh, I must go away and hear the whole lot of that. Um, probably later tonight. Okay. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Now, that brings me on to another area I really wanted to explore with you. And this is you as a dancer. You've mentioned that a couple of times earlier. Um, and I think there are competitions on Guernsey, which um, I, I'd like to hear about. You, you, you told me you, you were part of a, a dancing competition on Guernsey. That's right. Yes. Um, we won, uh, run over here a, something called the Dance Floor, Ch Floor Challenge which is basically like Strictly on Guernsey. Um, it's not televised though or anything like that. It is a show. Um, so they have a series of what they call professional dancers, which I am supposedly one of. Um, and then we have local celebrities. Um, and that might be, for example, my first partner was the local butcher. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we um, teach them how to dance along with our um, teachers. Um, and we compete um, in a show with 
Strictly, um, similar to Strictly, with all the scores um, and the judges, and we do get judges over from the UK as well. Um, and oh, his name's gone out of my head. The um, the one who announces the numbers, Alan Dedicut. Um, oh yeah, he's actually a friend of my dance teacher, and he does the announcements for all of us um, when we walk onto the floor. And he came for the last two years and actually. Uh, compared the evening and announced all of the scores. Oh, yeah, <laughs> but, but because you never see him, um, somehow he's sort of t in the background, but actually his voice is the voice of Strictly. Uh, yeah. uh, yes. So um, uh, my family, we're absolutely glued to Strictly. I'm sure lots of our listeners tonight are as well. We, we all pile into the lounge and listen to Strictly. There's mountains of chocolate on the table. And, uh, you know, we followed it step by step, dance by dance for the whole series. So how's it organised? I mean, how many weeks does it stretch over? And, and, and sort of um, it, in what sense are you... Um, 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 evicted uh, yeah. week so by week because we're all doing our normal jobs um, we don't do all the training that <laughs> they do on Strictly um, so we set up in January with our partners and we have a couple of choreography sessions and we learn two dances so we either have as a couple a ballroom or a Latin and this year I've got the Foxtrot um, and then we also have a group dance um, with different styles and this year we're doing a 40s medley um, which includes some Lindy Hop and some Jive and some rock and roll um, and so we have to um, basically train we do two evening sessions a week and then we have private lessons at the weekend and then it's up to us if we want to do any more and uh, the actual show is um, the end of April and so we only do those two dances um, but because we're all working, it takes that time to um, just learn that. And these are really proper non-dancers that have never danced a step before. Um, so you've really got to do a, a journey with them to get through. Um, but we have all the costumes and the, the makeup and, and all of that kind of thing that goes with it. All the spray tan? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> Spray tan till I move to Guernsey. <laughs> uh, I mean, you live on a desert island anyway. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> it's pretty I, cold at the moment. <laughs> I think that you um, were involved with dancing in the UK. Is that when it started? Is that when you were having lessons? Yeah, basically, I started going to some Ciroc lessons um, and uh, I eventually met Carl through that. Um, my uh -huh. dance teacher took me up to Sheffield and Carl had already been dancing for years. And so we met there. When we moved over to Guernsey, we'd already um, looked into dance on the island. And unfortunately they don't do Ciroc over here. Um, so we tried a couple of the dance schools and we sort of settled on the one that I'm in, the ballroom and Latin. Um, and after about a year of beginner lessons, the dance teacher approached me and said, I think you can be a dancer. And I said, oh, do I get to be a celebrity in the Dance World Challenge? And he went, no, I want you to be a professional. I was like, Woo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, So, yeah, so I really enjoy it. It's um, very important. So, uh, again, that leads nicely on to our last piece. Um, tell us about that, because, um, uh, well, I'm guessing you could dance to this one. Yes. Um, so I've chosen Libertango um, by Piat Sola. Um, and this, I guess, comes from uh, my later discovery of tango and Argentine tango music. Um, and I have been very lucky to dance to this. Very, um, we did a short version um, of this version that we're listening to. Um, and actually some of my students played it for me because I do a themed concert every year. And this, that year was the theme of dance. Um, and so we had different dance groups and the students said, please, will you um, dance miss? So I chose live a tango. Uh, and I, I think it's just really um, fantastic and I love the rhythms in particular. Hey, well, you got your fast piece in. You said all the pieces were slow, but that's a great way to end. Um, it's such a versatile piece. Um, I, I can see that's played by Yo-Yo Ma. Um, the orchestra, Rutland, were going to play that last May in the concert. Clearly, we didn't, but we've got an American programme set up for some stage in the future, and, and that's on the programme. Um, I was seeing a version of Libertango uh, arranged for 
string orchestra played by a German orchestra. And he'd made a seriously different arrangement of it. There was all sorts of um, string techniques going on. Uh, it's such a versatile piece, but um, great to dance to. I, mean, I could see lots of people moving, really be, being sort of um, uh, getting into that. Um, well, um, and I can see the chat bar has, has come up all sorts of comments right the way through this conversation. They're itching to ask you lots of questions. So I'm going to say I've enjoyed this evening more than I can possibly tell you. It's been the most wonderful, wonderful way to, to, to spend the day. I'm so grateful to you. Great to be connected with you uh, over this distance to, to Guernsey. Um, and I'm going to hand over now to, um, to, to, to people who are going to ask questions. And I think Sarah's going to... Um, Sarah is going to handle yeah. these questions. So I'm going to say goodbye now, Debbie. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> okay, so I think we've got a question from Andy. Yeah, my question, Debbie, was about the comment you made about sort of language and, and music, whereas obviously singing in the language in which it was intended has musical benefits, but what about the audience in terms of understanding it? Um, because if you have to read sort of from a programme note, it means you're distracted from the music. It must be quite a difficult balance, I imagine. It is. I think the key really is for the, the performer to actually explain what the music is about. Um, and you don't have to say very much, but just giving the audience a flavour of the mood. And then obviously it's about your performance. Um, and so many of them, um, for example, the leader, well, or any in languages really, have um, so much emotion with it. And I think your facial expressions are crucial to that as well as the mood of the music. And I certainly know people who've been to some concerts and they've said to me afterwards, oh, I've never really been to this type of music before and I didn't know what I'd think or if I'd understand, but I really understood what you were trying to get across. Um, and so I think that can be conveyed through the performance. Um, but I always do put out um, some text as well, if I can. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. That's interesting. Great, thank you. And uh, we've got a question from uh, David Kahlo as well. Hi, David. It's David here again. Seems a long while since we had a chat in that um, cafe before your wonderful oh, concert in yes. the um, Yes, I'm glad you chose John Barry. As the orchestra knows, we did out of Africa in March. Mm. And you could tell a lot of the audience have purely come to hear that piece of music. Thank you. Okay, and then we've got a question from Catherine Collison. Hi Debbie, nice to see you. Um, I'm actually going to be cheeky and ask you two questions because I was intrigued by your um, your recital that you did with uh, the violinist that you were talking about. Um, so I'm, I'm intrigued to know what what you what else you played in in that. Um, we did um, Holst's four songs for soprano and violin, which I didn't know. It was through researching the program that I came across them. And they're absolutely beautiful. If you um, search them on YouTube, you'll find them, but they have no um, piano accompaniment. Um, wow, and I don't know you at all. Sort of, yeah, they're sort of folk style um, and they're gorgeous pieces. Um, so we did those. Um, I also did the Eric Whitaker, uh, the Hebrew love songs, um, okay. which is fantastic. Um, and um, another uh, sort of contemporary piece called My Garden, um uh with uh three short movements um by an american composer whose name escapes me at the moment um but um yeah it was a really really interesting program to research because we didn't know of that many pieces just for soprano and violin so it was interesting to do yeah no, it's, a, it's an intriguing combination because obviously both being uh, sort of high pitch um uh, voices, uh, as it were, that would that would be interesting to hear. Uh, and my other question was um, just about the dancing, and I wondered if you had any uh, particular favourite dance. Um, I am a bit of a ballroom girl, I have to say. Um, so at the moment, I'd say that probably um, tango and um, foxtrot are my favourites. Um, but I am a huge fan of the jive. Um, and I actually won the local competition with my partner a few years ago, who I was helping with the jive. So I guess that will always have a special place in my heart. <laughs> Fantastic. Very energetic. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, I ha I've got to ask you then, Debbie, what, what is your favourite jive that's ever been on Strictly? I think mine was the Jay McGuinness one. 
yes, I think it's got to be the Jay McGuinness uh, for me as well. Um, that was just quite incredible. Um, although I have to say, Harvey um, was pretty good this year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good. And then we've got a question from Catherine Hammonds. Hi, Debbie. Um, Hi. Just following, uh, following on from that, I just wondered how, to what extent you found musicianship helpful with dancing, um, sort of the sense of rhythm and just getting into music. Presumably, is that helpful? Um, hugely, hugely helpful, yeah. um, especially when you're looking at the choreography and um, my teacher tries to choreograph it to the musical expression um, within uh -huh. music. And so you, you have to understand that. And that can be a real challenge when you're teaching your partner who's new to dance. Um, if they've never sort of worked with beats mm. before, they don't really know. And that, that is interesting to work with them on that. Um, but definitely the music helps um, um, in lots of ways. I think it can also hinder as well because I get really frustrated if I see other people out of time. <laughs> uh, and uh, obviously everyone's learning and you want to do the best you can. Yeah, um, of course. And I get, get frustrated with myself if I go out of time as well. <laughs> it's, all, it's all good fun though, isn't it? That's it amazing. Is. Yeah. yeah, it's great. <laughs> Brilliant. And then uh, Rachel has a question. It's completely unrelated to music, Debbie, because I like to be different, but you mentioned Bond when you were just talking about John Barry, so I have to ask you if you've got the box set, who is your favourite Bond? Well, it's probably a controversial answer, but I actually really like Pierce Brosnan. Oh, um, no, so that would be my answer. Oh, absolutely, okay. my favourite. There we are. Oh, there we go. I know it wouldn't be for a lot of people, but it is for me. <laughs> I'm, I'm a Daniel Craig person myself. Um, so I've got a question. Um, so whenever I can get out in the car on my own at the moment, which which isn't doesn't seem to be very often, um, mm. I always listen to Laudate Dominum. I've just become slightly obsessed with it. Ah. And I just wondered if you'd ever sung it. Um, I have once, um, but not sort of in a, an actual concert, really just for my own enjoyment, really, when I'm just trying out different repertoire, but it's something that I would like to do, definitely. Yeah, I've only discovered it recently, would you believe, but I just, yeah, just love it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lovely piece, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but uh, who is your favourite singer, actually, Debbie? Oh, that's a toughie. Um, I guess, apart from Dame Janet Baker, um, I'd probably say Emma Kirkby, um, because I guess I was exposed to her quite a lot growing up, and I did have the opportunity of doing some masterclasses with her when I was at university, um, because York's very much drawn to early music, so my singing teachers pushed me in that direction to start with, um, and so um, I did work with her, and I did really like the purity of her voice and her interpretation of Baroque pieces in particular. So I'd probably have to go for her. Yeah, I, I had the privilege of hearing her in Leicester Cathedral uh, mm -hmm. several years ago, and I just thought she was amazing. Mm -hmm. um, she's played with her, was it Anthony Ru Ruley? Mm -hmm. the, yeah. um, the lute player. I think he does stuff with her regularly, but yes. yeah, mm -hmm. she's she, yeah, she right. She's got an amazing purity. And I was yeah. brought up on Kathleen Ferrier, actually. Oh, yes. and I don't know whether that's, I don't know whether she's an acquired taste. I don't know. Um, Possibly. But, yeah. um, it's interesting because when um, I was asked which performance of um, Air Barma Dish I would like to have, um, that was an interesting question because some of the performances, such as Kathleen Ferrier, would ha were ha perhaps a little bit too operatic for me. Um, and I didn't feel that suited the style of music, um, hence why I actually went for the countertenor Michael Chance. Um, but yes, I do think everybody's voice individually, it's very personal to you when you're listening as to what you like and the interpretation. Mm, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, oh, I've just seen Catherine Hammond checked through the Strauss, according to Wikipedia. Uh, piano came first, then the orchestral arrangement in case anyone, yeah, so that's just one last question. Well, I, I just wondered about any future ambitions because we've talked about getting you back. That's one of the great things about these evenings that, um, you know, we, 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 we very much hope we're going to see the people featured in these conversations again and, and sort of further our relationship uh, musically. So I just wondered what future ambitions you've got um, uh, as a soprano in, in any direction at all. 
Um, I think in terms of orchestral um, music, I've always wanted to do some of the songs of the Auvergne. Um, uh, again, I just think they're beautiful and um, to have the chance to sing those with orchestra, I think would be fantastic. Um, so that would be something on the orchestral side. Um, on other sides, um, I'm always open to ideas, to be honest, because I find everything that I work towards so interesting. Um, and through my life and moving to Guernsey, it's opened up so many opportunities um, that I just, I'm, I'm willing to try anything. I mean, my next concert is, is working, um, actually singing of what was Finzi's piano is going to be accompanying me. And um, it's going to be at the house of Piers Dupre, who was Jacqueline Dupre's brother, who we discovered lived on Guernsey. So amazing, the connections. So I'll be doing some English song for that concert. <laughs> Gosh, well, that's really interesting. Let us know how that goes. <laughs> but what, what about the four last songs? I know R R Luckland did it before, but... Yes, well, again, it's something I've never sung, and mm. absolutely, it's one of the main um, pieces for Soprano. Well, these sessions are becoming more and more like parties every time we meet, which has been absolutely wonderful. Um, and I think the question times at the end are a real way for us to all connect. It's been, it's been a, a lovely, lovely session.